I want you to imagine that you're out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean right now. You're sitting on this small rowing boat. You're a thousand miles from land and you can't make any progress. You're stuck on sea anchor. You can't row into this wind and this swell. So you just have to wait. The only person with you is your rowing partner. So the two of you have to ride out the storm and wait for it to pass. When it finishes, one of you will get out and you'll row for two hours. You'll do that, then you'll come in and then the other person will go out for two hours. And you'll do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for as long as it takes to get across the Atlantic Ocean. When I spent 85 days out in the ocean, in the Atlantic, you quickly realize the power of the environment around you and the impact it has on your mindset. And the concept of mindset was brought home to me very, very quickly. When I decided I wanted to row across the Atlantic, the first people I contacted were the only Irish people who had ever done this, Eamon and Peter Kavanagh. And I'll never forget the first time I met Eamon. He said, Paul, trying to row across the Atlantic has nothing got to do with how much ocean experience you have. He said, it's also, believe it or not, nothing got to do with how good a rower you are, but it's everything to do with how mentally tough you are, your mindset. I said, Eamon, it's just as well, because I've never been out in a boat before and I can't row. <laughs> and boy, was he right. When we got out onto the ocean, and your, your, ro your routine, if you like, is two hours on, two hours off. So I row for two hours, Tori, my rowing partner, would rest, and then she'd jump in and she'd row for two hours. And you very, very quickly realize the power of the environment that you're in. So there's the macro parts of the environment, so the, the strength of the wind, the sheer force of the swell, and at times the absolute sort of veracity of what you're in. And you can't control that. But you also realize there's small, <coughs> excuse me, micro elements of your environment, the things you can control. So how I would engage in conversation with Tori, what I choose to read, what I choose to listen to, how I'd process my thoughts. And these became really, really powerful to impact our overall environment. Because as I said, our environment was going to affect our mindset which was also going to affect how we behave and how we perform. So let me give you an example of one of them. About 20 minutes after I took this picture, Tori was rowing and I was off shift in the cabin. And I just heard this crunch, a, a pretty big wave, picked the boat right up on our side. We didn't capsize, but we went right over 90 degrees. I got thrown across the cabin, Tori was on the oars and she got flung violently off the side of the boat and she cracked two of her ribs. So I jumped out and I grabbed her and I brought her inside. And she was quite shaken up, and she was in tears, and I was quite shaken up too. I said, would you like a letter? She said, I'd love one. So what we'd done before the trip is I contacted Tori's family and friends in Ireland and in Canada, Tori's Canadian, and she had done the same for me. And I said, I want you to write Tori a letter. Now put into it whatever you want, but the context under which I'm going to give it to her is it's meant to be a bit of a pick-me-up if she's having a bad day. So in this instance, I started reading a letter from her father. And as I started reading the letter, she wiped the tears away and she started smiling and I thought, great, this is working perfectly. However, as I read down through the end of the letter, I looked up and she was in tears again and she just waved at me. I said, Paul, stop, I can't hear anymore. I think there was just too much emotion in the letter. I said to her, hang on a second, her dad's quite sarcastic and he put a little PS in it. He said, PS, be nice to the little Irish fella, you might have to eat him. <laughs> and I'm sort of glad you laughed there, because that's exactly what she did. And it just, it had this immediate effect on her. And I could see these little things, re we realized how powerful they could be to control the environment to an extent. When you think about the environment that we all have in our lives right now, the people in our life affect our mindset. Good, bad, sometimes maybe neutral. When I was growing up, my mother used to always say to me, there's no such thing as can't, and it used to drive me nuts. So if I couldn't figure out how to do something, Mom, I can't do this. She said, Paul, there's no such thing as can't. And I'd sort of go off in a sulk and I'd try and figure out to do whatever it is I was doing. This sort of came back to bite her in the ass a couple of years later when I told her I wanted to row across the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing she said to me was, Paul, you can't do that, don't be daft. I was like, Mom, there's no such thing as can't. <laughs> but I, if you like this, this mantra, if I could call it that of Mom, it had a really powerful effect on my mindset growing up. I didn't realize it at the time. And another component, most of us here tonight probably have a phone in our pocket. Another element of our environment is technology and how it impacts us. When we were out in the Atlantic, we had a satellite phone with us. That was the only piece of communication technology. And some of you might know satellite phones are very expensive to make calls on it, so we didn't use it that much. 
but we turn it on once or twice a day to get a text message. And we, we, it was nearly one of the highlights of the day because you turn the phone on and you, you get a message maybe from family or friends or sometimes people you didn't even know. And also we get a weather forecast. And I remember turning on the phone one day and I was all excited to see how many messages we might have got. Five or six would be a good day. And I was sort of deflated because we only had one. I thought, oh. And my mood went from a little bit of deflation to absolute fear and panic when I turned on the message because it was a weather forecast and it just said, hurricane warning, Epsilon. And Epsilon was the, the name of the hurricane. So, you know, whether it's a piece of technology, whether it's the people in our lives, the one thing I learned from this experience or other adventures that I've done is the environment that we have around us has a massive impact on our mindset. And the mindset, in term, in, you know, from a knock-on point, that affects how we behave every single day. In the work that I do when I'm working with clients, often I get, you know, I don't have time for this, or I can't make time for that. And of course, we're all time challenged, I get that. But probably one of the biggest gifts I've gotten from these trips is that, you know what, someday the sun will set on all of us. I don't know how long I've got. The clock is ticking, but make use of the time I have, because I'll never get it back. And if I, t if I was to think that I have my activities and my behaviors here every day, and they affect the outcomes that I'm going to get in life, if I accept that my mindset will play a role in how I behave, I think most of us would accept that's probably reasonably accurate. If I then take a step above that and think of my environment, so if you think of your environment, the people in your lives, where you work, who you work with, what you read, what you listen to, what you choose to listen to, the people you choose to listen to, all of that environment has a massive, massive effect on mindset. So I was told earlier on today that it's, it's a good idea maybe to have a call to action and have a suggestion. One of the things I'm very aware of is that if I make a small tweak in my environment, it could be where I work, it could be the people I spend time with, it could be how I spend an hour in the evening, it can have a very significant effect on mindset. And over, over a period of time, these small things add up. We would have done two and a half thousand strokes every two hours on the Atlantic. If you were to plot where you go with that, it's nothing. It's the width of a fingertip on a map. So you'd never really do it. But over time, these small little accumulations, they build up to something a bit more significant, which in this case was us making it across the Atlantic. Thank you.